Do you struggle within your percussion writing process to identify and make sense of your MIDI drum sequences? Are you fed up staring at what looks like a wacky, jumbled, sideways game of Tetris? Well, today I want to show you how you can set up your instrument piano roll to display your MIDI kit's constituent parts like snare and cymbals instead of the basic 11 octave piano view default within FL Studio. Let's dive into how to get this set up. The first thing you'll need is your drums instrument. I'll be using Easy Drummer 3 Made of Metal Sound Library for this example. Any plugin which leverages the piano roll for sequencing will work, however. As you can see within the current piano roll view, my drum kit is only represented by the notes designated by the software's MIDI mapping. In this case, my kick is represented by note C3 and snare center by note D3. While I can certainly write and edit within this view, it is far from intuitive and does not fit well within my writing process. Let's make life a bit easier by pairing our drums instrument with the BRSO Articulate plugin by Blake Robinson. It's a free software with no strings attached. I've provided the link in the video's description. Once installed, let's add a BRSO Articulate channel beside our drums. Even better, let's group our drum bits for organization and better workflow by selecting the two, selecting the channel options dropdown, then group selected. I'll simply name this group drums. Now I can begin the process of pairing BRSO Articulate and Easy Drummer. First, open BRSO Articulate and click the Articulation Configuration panel and select the Piano Roll Key Names folder icon here. Now, here is where things get a bit involved. MIDI and individual kit mappings will vary by software, so you will have to spend a bit of time on these next steps. BRSO Articulate is asking us to load a text file which lists how our kit corresponds to each note on the piano roll. At bare minimum, each loaded text file must have a total of 132 row lines for the new mapping to view thoroughly. To generate this, I found it easiest to use Google Sheets. I can autofill the rows I need and copy the result into Notepad. Back in BRSO Articulate, I can now load my custom text file. If I go into the BRSO Articulate Channel Piano Roll, I can now see the 132 rows in place of what was the standard piano roll notes. We're now another step closer to our goal. Let's link the BRSO Articulate Channel to Easy Drummer to allow MIDI input. By default, BRSO Articulate sends MIDI via port 0, channel 1. Back over in Easy Drummer, I can click the cog at the top left and then VST wrapper settings. I just set the MIDI input port to zero. Now I can receive audio from the Easy Drummer channel when affecting playing back the BRSO Articulate piano roll. As I had mentioned previously, my Easy Drummer kit maps the main kit to note C3. Along our custom piano roll, this correlates to row 96. I'll use this as a keystone for further labeling my drum kit. If I reload the custom mapping file in BRSO Articulate, I can now see kick in place of 96. By repeating this process and previewing each note, either by clicking the piano roll or by using a physical keyboard, I can further identify and label the remainder of the kit. Unless you have an insanely expansive drum kit in use, you'll find a majority of notes are duplicated or simply null. It's really up to you how thorough you want your piano roll to be displayed. You can also reference your drum plugin software's MIDI layout online to better identify and label a particular key. Let's load up a completed mapping file and take a look at the piano roll in action. So there you have it. This was how to create custom piano roll labels for drum sequencing in FL Studio. Admittedly, this is an involved process to set up, but one that can pay off quickly over the course of a project. I have found it to be instrumental in my writing process and cannot imagine going back to a default piano roll template. 
If you found this video helpful and would love to learn more on the subject of FL Studio production, feel free to like, subscribe, and drop any questions you may have into the comments section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject and if you've discovered any tricks to better refine this process. Take care.